A new generation of mutants are on the horizon with the impending X-Men apocalypse. It's time to meet some fresh faces. It feels like just yesterday we were sitting in the movie theatre waiting for the post-credits teaser following X-Men Days of Future Past. Well now we know the full attire belonging to some of the main characters, as well as some of the key casting choices. A quick summary, we pan up from a sandy knoll to reveal a godlike figure being worshipped by hordes of bowing people chanting En Saba Nur, as you do. This figure is creating a pyramid by raising his arms. I'm sure the ancient Egyptians will have a thing or two to say about that. A young face is revealed as are four figures on horseback, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Cut to black. Days of Future Past was the best reviewed film in the X-Men franchise. How the heck do you sequelize, or better yet, top it? With the intro of Apocalypse, that's how. A big bad 5,000 year old mutant believed to be the first who was out to rule the world at all costs. Everyone knew this could not be his ultimate physical form. Enter the final Apocalypse. Golden Globe nominee Oscar Isaac is in the titular role. He describes Apocalypse as the creative slash destructive force of this earth. When things start to go awry, or when it seems like they're not moving towards evolution, he destroys those civilizations. Apocalypse looks like an advanced, tech-absorbing pharaoh doused in blue paint. I immediately thought of Ronan from Guardians of the Galaxy. Marvel fans don't seem too excited by his appearance. In fact, to say many felt let down is kind of an understatement. The comparisons have begun. He's been likened to Power Rangers villain Ivan Ooze. Another Twitter post settled for a Navi Mrs. Doubtfire. Oscar Isaac is unrecognisable and we know he's got the acting chops, so we'll have to wait and see how he rolls with Apocalypse. The full extent of this guy's powers remain to be seen. To give you an idea though, he claims to have control of his body on a molecular level, so shape changing and immunity to the effects of age are all in a day's work for the big guy. He's deemed an external due to his mutant ability, immortality. Fans are stoked with the rest of the costuming and Brian Singer's desire to remain faithful to the comic book visuals. Awakening from his Egyptian tomb, Apocalypse is on the search for assistance in his plan to cull civilizations. He finds Teenage Storm in Cairo, Angel in a Berlin fight club, and Psylocke working behind the Iron Curtain for a mutant broker. Doesn't matter what your sexual orientation is, Psylocke is the bomb. Besides the sick name, the costume similarity to the comics is outstanding, and the casting of Olivia Munn just tops it off. Not only is Psylocke a skilled martial artist and trained pilot, but she can generate a telekinetic katana or direct her telekinesis through her fist to strike with superhuman strength. But in Poland lies his greatest target, Eric, aka Magneto, who is trying to live a peaceful, metal-free life. Alexandra's ship from Aaliyah, the Princess of R&B, is taking on the role of Storm. I think she is just superb and a strong choice to fill the shoes of Halle Berry. Sophie Turner is ditching her mortal Game of Thrones self for a teenage mutant Jean Grey. Already there's a different vibe from the Farm Kiansen version we're familiar with, and we're excited to see how the character will come across on screen. As Cyclops, we have Ty Sheridan, who starred opposite Matthew McConaughey in Mud, and Lana Kandor is making her debut as Jubilee. Gifted in gymnastics, her mutant ability is to generate explosive energy. Miles away while Apocalypse is on his quest, Mystique is rescuing mutants on her own, including the teleporting Nightcrawler played by Aussie actor Cody Smith McPhee. As for Gambit, it's been very strongly hinted that he will appear in the film, given a standalone is planned for next year, and it's important to introduce Channing Tatum in the role. Brian Singer admitted ages ago he wanted to add the card-throwing mutant into the mix and has been throwing even bigger hints around like this. We've seen Gambit on the big screen before in X-Men Origins Wolverine played by Taylor Kitsch who later went on to star in John Carter. They clearly want a bigger name for the standalone film and there's other factors involved but personally Kitsch shouldn't have been ditched. Should be a hashtag or something. Honestly I'm really not sure about Channing in this role but hopefully he'll do the fan favourite character proud. Of course, we have returning favourites Jennifer Lawrence, James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Nicholas Holt and Evan Peters as Quicksilver. An awesome trailer was revealed at Comic Con, but I'm not going to give you the details until we have a HD version. For today's tease, we have Brian Singer's post tiptoeing through Cairo. X-Men Apocalypse is scheduled to detonate in Australia on the 26th of May and in the US on the 27th. I'm Amy and you've been watching The Briefcase.